Hello, now we want to discuss tools designed in view to extract hidden and not so obvious information in the results of lattice dynamics calculations done by Siesta with the subsequent use of a Vibra code. In particular, these tools may be useful to apply to large systems in which many vibration modes are interacting and uh, the existing correlations in the movement of different atoms are not so easy to analyze. Now we will discuss a set of tools aimed at extracting information related to lattice dynamics and phonons from uh, Siesta calculation and uh, subsequent uh, Vibra calculation. These tools uh, have been mentioned in a recent publication on uh, new Siesta developments in the Journal of Chemical Physics and in corresponding part of this uh, publication the reference has been done and the context explained. Uh, in fact, uh, <coughs> in this uh, suite of tools which is labeled CS2LD, uh, there are three main tools and a certain number of just technical utilities. And uh, the tools we will briefly cover in this introduction are PHDOS for extracting uh, the density of vibration modes and organizing uh, their projection according to different criteria. The second tool is uh, VPAND, which performs to calculate the contribution uh, to vibration entropy from the given phonon spectrum. And uh, finally, uh, the uh, tool VLCV, uh, which uh, permits to calculate the velocity autocorrelation function and to make its Fourier uh, transform. Uh, we start with the discussion of PHDOS. Uh, in fact, uh, the basic uh, property uh, which uh, enters uh, this uh, algorithm of projection is the phonon eigenvectors. As a result of uh, Vibra calculation, uh, we have an uh, eigenvector uh, which uh, contains information about uh, how every atom is displaced uh, in uh, every vibration mode. And then we can combine this uh, information according to different criteria. The most uh, important property may be to organize the projection onto a given Q vector. Right? Basically, this type of calculation is uh, usually done on a system which is large enough, so in a supercell with several tens of several hundreds of atoms, so that uh, uh, calculation for uh, gamma phonon only in this large system already contains uh, a lot of uh, useful information and the projection onto a certain vector of uh, vector of Q mm -hmm. assumes that uh, we are interested uh, to look how uh, the atoms situated at different position of the supercell uh, correlate in the relative vibration compared with the wave vector uh, defined uh, in the uh, original um, brilliant zone of the underlying uh, perfect uh, lattice. Right? So in order to make it more clear, so we can discuss with the first formula in which the eigenvector, a component of eigenvector of a given atom numbered by alpha and the Cartesian direction numbered by uh, i, uh, before being summed over the atoms of the supercell are multiplied uh, with the exponential factor. In this way, the displacement of atoms which are in phase with a, second, uh, with a certain special wave of a given Q vector are amplified and those which are in uh, out of phase will be suppressed. Right? And in this case, one, uh, in this uh, way, uh, one can uh, emphasize uh, the uh, trends uh, which remind uh, the phonon dispersion, even if the system under study uh, may be uh, disordered, may be uh, a type of uh, alloy, where, uh, strictly speaking, uh, the 
um, translation symmetry uh, does not uh, does not hold. Right? And as a particular example of this, we can consider the projection onto the q equals zero value. This will uh, emphasize the uh, vibrations of um, <coughs> different um, atoms over the supercell, which are uh, strictly speaking in phase. And um, uh, this result then can be directly compared with the uh, experimental spectra like Raman spectra or infrared spectra. Moreover, one can uh, organize the uh, distinction between the longitudinal and transversal components of vibration for the given direction of a Q vector. In this case, it just um, needs to make a projection of the uh, given eigenvector component onto the projection of a Q vector and uh, isolate the perpendicular projection. And in this case, we will have a separation between the longitudinal and transversal modes. And uh, just to give a simple example of how it works, here is the uh, calculation done on a large enough supercells of mixed uh, semiconductor with uh, several hundreds of atoms. And uh, the projection is shown over a number of Q points which span the path from the uh, zone uh, center, which is here, to the zone boundary, which is here. And going along this path, we see how the uh, acoustical branches uh, uh, appears and um, and approaches, uh, I mean, flatly approaches the zone boundary as it should be expected. And then we have certain interplay uh, between the uh, longitudinal and uh, transversal uh, optical modes. No? So then we come to the discussion of vibration entropy. The underlying mathematics is, um, in fact, comes from thermodynamics. And uh, what we need to know is to how to represent the vibration density of states. And uh, again, having in mind that calculation is done on a large enough supercells with many vibration modes, and then the density of states can be represented just by the sum of the delta function at corresponding uh, discrete uh, frequencies. And uh, then the integration is straightforward. And uh, just what can be anticipated that the result of this integration may be either positive or negative because the function under the integrand changed the sign. And uh, depending on whether we have uh, important contribution from uh, low frequency modes, we may have uh, an important uh, negative contribution to the results and otherwise it may be positive. So this is quite uh, tricky and may depend uh, considerably from system to system. Finally, we come to molecular dynamics. In this case, we don't need any uh, precedent vibra calculation. The starting point is just the, the structure file and the history of molecular dynamics, uh, which is organized according to the Verley algorithm. And uh, having the data from a sufficient number of steps of the molecular dynamics, we can calculate the velocity autocorrelation function, first on the time domain, and then perform the Fourier transform. And uh, to give you an example of uh, how it works, here is uh, some test case of uh, a large enough molecule uh, where the calculation has been done over uh, thousands, several thousands of steps. And in the time domain, the velocity autocorrelation function will have some features. And then uh, as it uh, is Fourier transformed and uh, the uh, relevant interval of frequency is selected and brought to the correct uh, units of frequency, uh, we can compare the resulting density of modes to the result obtained from the frozen following calculation. And we can constate that uh, we find all the important peaks at the right positions. <coughs> well, and uh, then uh, without uh, uh, discussing uh, the details uh, of uh, uh, how to compare this calculation with this one. We, we stop now this discussion and we'll come to considering some examples. Now we want to discuss an example of using a PH DOS 
tool and uh, for the, this example we consider a mixed semiconductor with a supercell of 192 atoms with a composition of zinc, beryllium, uh, selenium. In this directory we find already the structure file which describes uh, which atom is situated where and the vectors files uh, which results from uh, the Vibra calculation. We simply run phdos and we pass the information about the file name for xv file and file name for the vectors file. Then we have a choice. We, want, uh, we, we may want to calculate the total densities of states and this is what we do for the beginning. We press T Calculation is done and uh, we get uh, two new files in the directory. Uh, the first of them is just the list of uh, frequencies and uh, um, with the weight of each atom contributing to each particular vibration. So it may look like this. 96.6 Okay, so there are four columns. The first one is just the frequencies. Then we want to plot it. I run GNU plot. Let's say plot 96x. No, I plot another one. I plot which is smeared one. Second file using one four with L. Okay. Here is the file. So it looks like uh, the quantum densities of states. Then I close it and I oh, so. then I do I run the pH dose again passing the same names of files but uh, now I want to make a projection on a given Q vector so I press Q and then the script asks me which value of Q I want to have for the projection so I opt for uh, central zone so I pass 0 0 0 and then another choice either I can um, go further and project into longitudinal and transversal which I don't want to do for the moment so I just uh, select the sum of squares and then the calculation is done and I get two more files uh, which are similar to the one we have seen before but now they represent the projection right so I open the file 90cx vsq and it, uh, first it uh, contains the information that uh, I have the phonon eigenvectors initially calculated for Q equals zero and then convoluted uh, with the projection on the Q uh, value zero, 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 right? And then again the data are organized in four columns, so I close this and I just plot this uh, result. So again I invoke new plot and I say plot 26 using 1 to 4 these lines and I want to compare it with the, uh, with the previous one where we have uh, the total density of modes So, now in this plot uh, uh, I see that uh, after the projection I have the violet line which in fact consists of two peaks. The peak at zero is just the acoustic mode, right, which is not of much interest. And then we have the mode which corresponds to transversal optical at the zone central. Right? 
And this is the peak which is uh, relevant for comparison with the Raman spectroscopy or infrared spectroscopy because um, in uh, these techniques mm, the vibration uh, are probed which are at the zone center. Right? Whereas in the total densities of states we have uh, the spreading of different uh, uh, modes over a large uh, range of frequencies. Right? So then uh, after making this um, projection onto the Q equals zero, the comparison with the spectroscopy results are more easy, more straightforward, and then uh, concentrating on the details of this peak, one can uh, draw certain conclusions about uh, the, uh, the nature of vibrations at the zone center.